Over a week ago, I did a video right here titled How to Make These Transformations Work in DBZ Kakarot. And in that video, I talked about how they could make Ultra Instinct work to where Ultra Instinct Omen is the transformation. And then you can use Mastered Ultra Instinct by going into surge mode while in Ultra Instinct Omen form. Well, guys, in today's video, it's kind of a crossover kind of thing because we know from Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 60 preview that Goku is able to tap into Ultra Instinct Omen at will, but not mastered Ultra Instinct. So in today's video, I'm going to go into how that lines up with that video I did last week. Let's go. Guys, if you're new to the channel, join the stack by hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications. Also, guys, every month I'm going to be selecting four individuals to be a part of the Geo stack. And when you do, you will get a $10 gift card to either PlayStation Plus or Xbox, whichever one that you have. So on with the video, guys. So I don't want to talk about like the manga. I'm not doing this video to break down the manga or anything like that, guys, because there are already people doing that. Even in the Dragon Ball Z community, um, just saying is doing the manga and Riken is doing the manga as well. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give anybody ammunition to say I'm copying content. However, I do follow the manga. And in following the manga, when I seen this part of what's coming, it it, it drew my attention to the video that I did right here about how to make transformations work. And like I said, in that video, I talked about how Ultra Instinct could work, how they would have you in the, they would make the transformation, the Ultra Instinct Omen form. And then they would make the, um, whenever you go into surge mode on that, it would activate um, Mastered Ultra Instinct. And guys, what I'm doing now, man, I'm just trying to get some B-roll footage for y'all. So we just not just sitting here looking at me on the screen. Um, but this is very interesting because in the moral arc right now in Dragon Ball uh, Super, we do have where Goku is able to tap into Master Ultra, not Master, Ultra Instinct Omen at will. I keep getting tongue tied with that. Ultra Instinct Omen at will. Now, this is so cool because... In relation to everything that's going on in Dragon Ball Super and everything that has gone on, it explains why in Dragon Ball Super Broly, Goku wasn't didn't use the form. Because in the Tournament of Power, Goku wasn't even at the point where he could tap into Ultra Instinct Omen at will. It kind of just happened. And so I know once Dragon Ball Super Broly came out, we were kind of like, why didn't he use Ultra Instinct Omen? Or why didn't he use Master Ultra Instinct? Now getting into the manga, we find out why. Because previous to this chapter, Goku was training with this gentleman right here, Mirus. He's an angel who was on the Galactic Patrol team. But anyway, he trained with Mirus to try to master Ultra Instinct. And he wasn't able to do that. However, he was able to tap into Ultra Instinct Omen at will. Now this transformation, just give him some backdrop here, guys. This transformation is extremely similar to the Super Saiyan 3 transformation because it puts enormous strain on the body and it drains your stamina like crazy you know and so goku can't stay in that form for a long time and not having mastered that it, you can understand why he's not able to tap into master ultra instinct that will but the fact that Weez brings it up about that does make me question does mastered ultra instinct drain and put that strain on your body as well I don't know if it does. I, I could speculate and say I don't think that it would. It's kind of like that in between the void kind of thing, if you will, but whatever. But it's interesting because, you know, like I said, that explains why he wasn't able to do it in Dragon Ball Super Broly. Now, as far as the game goes, how does this relate to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? Like I said in that previous video, guys, whenever we, uh, the, or, you know, because let's, let's be real, first of all, am I saying Ultra Instinct is coming to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? In no way, shape, form, or fashion am I saying that. What I am saying is that if it does, 
this is how they could implement that. And in that video, like I said, I talked about they can make Ultra Instinct open the transformation. And when you go into surge mode, it puts you into Ultra Instinct, the mastered form. However, you know, it, it puts that limitation there because when you're in surge mode, it, that doesn't last forever. OK, so you better do the damage while you can. Also, a cool thing they can do is once that surge meter runs out, you can re you're going to revert back to your base form and it's going to completely drain your key and leave you in a stunned state. That's going to make people uh, be cautious about using the form, tapping in the Master Ultra Instinct. But you know, it's gonna add some fun and realistic stuff to it. Cause like I said in yesterday's video, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is a simulation type game. I mean, it's less than, oh, no, we're not, yeah. We ain't getting no ads in here, not today, uh huh? But anyway, guys, you know, it's a simulation type game. So you, they're, they're gonna play it out the way that it's played out in the manga in the anime. Now, for those of you who say that, well, this isn't Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, guys, let me explain something. Vegeta never went Super Saiyan God in Dragon Ball Z. Even if you use the movies to say Battle of Gods in Fukasu no F, Vegeta never went Super Saiyan God in any of those. The first time we saw Super Saiyan God was in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I mean, it was in the in the manga with the uh, Goku Black arc. Okay. That's the first time we saw Vegeta in the red-haired Super Saiyan God form. That is Dragon Ball Super. We have Super Saiyan God. We're going to get Super Saiyan Blue. I mean, like you have to look at this from a business standpoint. It makes sense for Bandai to go and go further into this thing. I know a lot of people saying, well, this is Dragon Ball Z. It's only Dragon Ball Z. The people that are saying that are the people who want the Dragon Ball Z movies added to the game. I think that anybody who look at this from a logical standpoint sees how popular Dragon Ball Super content is. It's in every single Dragon Ball game right now, you know, and people would legit be upset if they gave us red hair and blue hair and not match uh, Ultra Instinct or even Blue Evolution. People are going to be like, what? Why? Why did you do that? You see what I'm saying? And it also makes perfect sense that this game would go beyond one season. Like right now, that we're in the first season pass thing. It makes sense that they would do more than one, guys. Like, I mean, think logically here. There's so much money on the table. They're not going to leave that money sitting on the table just to make a sequel for the game when they can stretch it out through DLC. But anyway, so with this form, guys, like the way that it's done here, like I said, it puts enormous strain on his body. He's, not, he's able to tap into it at will, but he's not able to tap into mastered Ultra Instinct. You see what I'm saying? So apply that, you know, you look at games like Dragon Ball Fighters. and Dragon Ball Fighters, Goku, you know, they have the mastered Ultra Instinct form. Same thing in Xenoverse 3. They have the mastered Ultra Instinct form. The issue with that is it's cool and all, don't get me wrong, but... Those games have balance, so you're not able to truly experience what it feels like to be, you know, Goku going from um, Ultra Instinct Omen to Mastered Ultra Instinct, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, also, it's kind of, it is, it's a game-breaking thing. Like, can you imagine having Mastered Ultra Instinct all the time in Dragon Ball Xenoverse? A lot of people are going to say, well, DM already, we could just one-shot enemies in the time machine and stuff like that, but you can't one-shot Beerus, and you're not one-shotting Whis unless you're on, like, the level 5 training. And you're not one-shotting the random NPCs or the villainous enemies. You know what I'm saying? To make the game interesting, to not, like, literally shatter the game. Because, guys, let's be honest. With these transformations, yeah, man, they're powerful. They're super powerful. But it, And it's close to game-breaking. It's not quite there, but it's close. You know, we do need some tougher enemies to fight along with the weaker ones. But if they were to put Ultra Instinct into the game, guys, that would be a done deal. People would play it for a little bit and they would be done. But implementing it this way, the way that it's done in the manga right now, that would make perfect sense for the game. That would add replayability. That would add more depth to the transformation. It would also make you consider how you use it. Because one interesting thing about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is in the fight against Beerus, you notice how it's... it's it's one of those things where we realize the approach to the fight. For example, when you have Vegeta, you are going to approach the fight with Beerus very differently than if you had Goku. You know, and if you have Goku, you're going to approach that fight differently than if you have Vegeta. Now we're getting into the game where it's becoming more like Dragon Ball Super-esque. 
You see what I'm saying? In Dragon Ball Z, it was just all about power, power, power. Whenever it switched over to Dragon Ball Super, things begin to take a different turn. The fights begin to become more strategic. That's why in the Tournament of Power, they didn't take Goten and Trunks. Vegeta said it himself that they're powerful, yes, but they lack fighting skill. And that's why fighters like Kale and Kefla, Khalifla, Kefla, all of the fusions and Kabanim, that's why they weren't as powerful as Goku and Vegeta. Yes, they had amazing power, but they didn't know how to fight. Even Whis brought that up. You see what I'm saying? So the game is doing the same thing, guys. But Goku and Vegeta are powerful. You can do meal effects and everything and make the Beerus fight easier. But guys, if you really want to test your metal, no meal effects, no transformations, no surge that boosts your health back up. And let me know how that fight with Beerus go after that. Now, if you geo in it... <laughs> <laughs> if you geo bigging it, then that's a different story because the boy geo big a beast at it. You know what I'm saying? He he got his stats very high, guys. But for the average players, the regular players like us, is that fight's not gonna be that easy. Now I have personally beat Beerus that way, guys, and it's still not easy. You have to approach that fight a certain way. Otherwise, no matter how strong you think you are, Beerus is gonna pummel you into the ground. You see what I'm saying? So that balance is there, you know, and, and adding something like Ultra Instinct Omen to the game, the way that I feel like they should do it, you know, and that's just my opinion, and the way that they're doing it in the manga makes perfect sense for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. This will also, uh, in my opinion, separate the game. I know people are going to be like, oh, no, I won't. Master Ultra Instinct is a transformation. Guys, we have to break away from that. That's one of my last video. Break away from what we want in the game to what's realistic for the game. I know people are going to say, well, DM, Master Ultra Instinct isn't realistic for this game. How is it not? How is it not realistic for the game? Tell me how is that not realistic for the game? It's realistic for the game. We already got Super Saiyan guy. We're getting Super Saiyan Blue. How is Ultra Instinct not an idea for the game? You see what I'm saying? Going forward, I'm not. And guys, let's be real. Would that come in this DLC? By no means. Probably. Heck no. It's probably like a 99.999% chance that that is not going to happen in this first season dlc but i do believe that bandai is going to do more season passes they are going to explore more content for this game so eventually we will get ultra instinct in some way shape form or fashion they're going to squeeze it in the game because they all about them dollars and people are going to pay to see ultra instinct in this game people are already talking about super saiyan blue kaioken in the game like come on bro but anyway so I just thought that that was a very interesting thing with the manga, and that's why I brought up this video. Like I said, I'm, I, I don't plan on covering the manga, guys. I do stay up to date with it, but I don't talk about it. Like I said, just saying it's starting to cover the manga. Riken is starting to cover the manga. So being in the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot community, having two people already covering it, I'm not going to start covering it because that's just... You know, it'll, you'll have three channels talking about the same thing. However, I do like taking this approach to the lore of dragon ball so much and how it applies to the game and i think i may start doing that more not necessarily with the manga but just with the series z dragon ball and all of that in totality and applying that to the games and seeing how that goes so if that's something that you would like to see let me know down in the comment section down below guys like i said don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join the stack guys that's all i got for right now's video till next time y'all thanks for watching peace Thank you.